In this screencast, we'll see how to work with Maven projects. Firstly, let's create a brand new Maven project. We select Maven from the options on the left, and then we can choose the JDK for the project. Here we'll stick with the latest version of Java 8, and we can optionally choose a Maven archetype to use to create the project. We're going to create a simple project, so we won't select an archetype. For Maven projects, we need to declare a group ID and the artifact ID of the application itself. If we want, we can call the project something different to the artifact ID, but for this example we'll keep the defaults. IntelliJ IDEA will generate the Maven pom.xml for you, which you can see here. You can choose whether to import any changes from the pom file manually, after you make them, or choose to have IntelliJ IDEA automatically import any changes as soon as they're made. Because this is a small project, and importing changes is probably not going to take too long, for this example we'll choose to enable auto-import. As well as creating the basic pom.xml, IntelliJ IDEA has also created the default directory structure for a Maven project, with the source and test folders defined. When we open the Maven projects window, we can see the standard Maven lifecycle phases, as well as the goals defined by various Maven plugins. We can easily add new dependencies via Generate on the code menu, or using Command N on the Mac, or Alt and Insert on Windows and Linux. As you'd expect from IntelliJ IDEA, you get code completion inside the dependency template to help you find the dependency you're looking for. You can see all your declared dependencies in the Maven window. Nested under those we've declared, you can see the dependencies they themselves rely on. When you look in the project window, you can see all the Maven dependencies regardless of whether they're declared by your project or pulled in as a transitive dependency. While it's possible you may want to create your own Maven project, as we have done here, it's much more likely you'll import an existing one. This is very straightforward. Select Import Project and navigate to the location of the code. You can select the root of the project and IntelliJ IDEA will figure out how to import it, but if you specifically know this is a Maven project and you want to use this model for your project structure, it's simplest to select the top-level POM file and the IDE will know you mean to import a Maven project. Generally, we'll want to keep the default settings, but here I would like to make sure that any sub-projects are located and set up correctly. I can select to automatically re-import the project if we make any changes to the pom.xml file. In this case, I don't want to at this time, because for most non-trivial projects this can take some time, and I would prefer to have control over when I apply the changes. For everything else, We'll keep the defaults. The next screen will show us all the Maven projects IntelliJ IDEA has found to import. In this case it's just one. I'm going to keep the default JDK and default project name and path. IntelliJ IDEA will use the Maven definition to figure out the structure of the application and of course download all the required dependencies and add them to the project. You can use Command-E or Control-E to navigate to the Maven window, and here we can see the dependencies of this project. As before, this window lists the goals and lifecycle phases. We can run any of these by double-clicking on them, and we can see the familiar results of running a Maven phase in the Run window, including dependencies being downloaded and tests being run. Let's skip watching the full thing and see the results. Our build was successful and we can see Maven has created a target directory with all the generated code and the other output. Of course, we can run the project's tests via Maven, which is particularly useful if there's a complex setup phase in Maven to get the tests running. But we can also simply run all tests, or a subset of them, from IntelliJ IDEA as usual. Editing the pom.xml file is easy, and of course you get full code completion. If you're working with Maven profiles, IntelliJ IDEA makes this simple. You can choose to enable or disable one or more profiles when you're running any of the Maven goals or phases. There are a number of things you can do with your project from the Maven window. Be sure to take a look at all the icons to see what they can do. Everything we've looked at so far has been in the free community edition of IntelliJ IDEA. The full Ultimate version has some extra features. 
one which may be particularly useful in understanding your MAVEN project, is seeing the dependencies as a diagram. This can give you an idea of which dependencies are directly imported by your application and which are transitive. You can also see test dependencies in green, and any unresolved ones will be in red. You can change the visibility of a dependency or exclude it via the diagram. You can also filter which ones to show if the diagram is too big to see easily. In this video we've covered the basics of working with Maven in IntelliJ IDEA. Take a look at the documentation for more details, or check out the YouTube channel for more video tutorials. Thanks for watching.